Gentlemen, welcome back to the Alpha M podcast. Today, I've got a very special guest, somebody who is a rock star in terms of entrepreneurship, somebody I've known for many years now, and um, a product that I absolutely love. I wear every single day that I know you guys are going to dig if you haven't checked them out. Today, I've got David Faree, who is the founder, one of the co-founders of Anson Belton Buckle. David, thanks for being here. Aaron, thank you so much for having me. An absolute honor. And, and you know, I'm, I'm glad that we got to to meet up this time of year because normally we're getting together in Atlanta at Minfluential. Um, and, and so it's great to kind of catch up, uh, you know, around the same time. So um, pretty crazy. We didn't, under, you know, no, didn't know what we were getting into last year um, about this time. So a lot has happened. So no, I, you I, know what's so fun? It's, I've been well, man. I've been well. I've been, uh, I've been trying to just keep everything in the air and uh, also stay sane. You know, that's the thing that has really been kind of a little bit challenging for me is that, I didn't realize how much I miss people, you know, being around people. Like you think about like, you know, just even just simple things like going to Starbucks and hanging out and people watching, you know, it's something yeah. that I love to do. And, and I haven't Absolutely. been able to do that in a, a hang, hang on, turn this around. All right. That's uh, there we go. That's better. Haven't been able to do that in, um, in, you know, in, in months now, almost a year. And so, so David, tell everybody a little bit about your story. Your story is pretty amazing. Um, what you guys have been able to do. And I just, you know, this podcast, I really want it to be a value and, and help people that are aspiring entrepreneurs. You know, I think that a lot of people really have that idea or that dream of, oh, I would love to start a business, you know, but when it comes to actually identifying a what business to start and how to actually go about doing that, it's, it's challenging, right? And challenging would be an understatement. And so if you wouldn't mind, take it, take everybody down the road a little bit of, of how Anson Belt came to be and, and sort of the, the story. Yeah, absolutely. So um, my father had discovered this style of belt uh, in Asia um, about 2007 or so um, on a trip with my sister. And, and so he last night he was there, he picked up this belt, had no idea what he had until he really came back and sized it and tried it on. It was like, holy cow, where can I find more of these? And so that was, you know, went out, started looking for him, asked friends, family, couldn't find him anywhere. So he came to me and he said, you know what? He said he gave one to me as well. So bought one for himself, one for me. And he was like, I want to start selling these belts. And so at the time I was wearing a belt and I actually have in my office a picture of the belt I was wearing because it was that bad. I mean, I had made all my own holes. It was completely worn out. I had even gone as far as to cut off the end and I rounded the end of the leather and shaded it in with a Sharpie. It was so terrible. So when he came to me, I was like, you know what, this could work. And I think that that's one of the biggest things about an idea that someone has for a business is you kind of have to, to ask around, ask your friends and family, people that are close to you, you know, people that are going to give you a straight answer um, and oh, not just kind of not you know, <laughs> fuck you up, you know, but to be honest and say, what do you think about this? Is there a need for this in your life? And if you can find a product that solves someone's problem, you know, like this belt did. Um, so, you know, it, it, I never had a belt that fit right. It was always, always in between holes. It was too tight. It was too loose. And then it would get worn out over a few months. You know, you wear it for three or four months and then it starts to crack and fade. And so um, I knew that this was a, a great idea with our belts. You don't have any holes. There's a micro adjustable track system. Hold on, wait for it, wait for it. I, I got yep. it on. I can there show everybody. Go. Yep. See? Absolutely. Here, here yep. it is. All right, gentlemen, I'm going to pitch it. Ready? The reason why these belts, I'm going to sell it now. These belts are so amazing is because there are no holes. And you're like, yo, how's that happen? It is right. all about the track system, right? Micro adjustments, gentlemen. And the really cool thing about your belts and the, the genius behind them, not only are they like super clean and there's no holes and, and honestly, they're actually like fun to wear because like whenever you like put it on, you get that like really satisfying, like, like click. click, click yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like on a and it locks it into place. There's a little trigger, boom. Now there is a learning curve. And so but when you when you get these belts, the one thing you definitely need to do, and I tell everybody, is you got to learn to use that mechanism. Play because with it. You, yeah, just play with it because, learn how to work it. Yeah. Because if you're trying to pee really fast and, and or you got to go, like, and, and it literally, these belts do not come off if they don't, if you don't know the little secret. Exactly. Um, you know, but the thing that's so amazing about these belts is that literally there's no holes and they're one size fits all. When you buy them, they're super long. And all you do, you wrap it around you, you cut it, and then you attach the buckle. And the buckles are all interchangeable. You got a ton of different buckles. I am the biggest Anson, band, uh, Anson belt buckle fan and slut. I literally have <laughs> probably, if I go in my other room, I literally have probably 50 different, I think I have all of the straps that you sell. 
because That's they're awesome. so incredibly versatile. So, so, okay. So your dad comes to you. Yeah. He's like, yo, I got an incredible bit product. Yeah. What yeah. do you think? And you look down at your belt. You're like, uh, I think that this yeah. belt is better than the one I'm wearing. So Absolutely. where do you go next? How does, yeah, how does so, it work? You know, and this was 2008 or so, 2007, 2008. And, and if you think about it, e-commerce was in its infancy. Uh, you know, he told me, I, I, first thing I said was, where are you going to sell them? And he said, I'm going to sell them online. And I said, what do you know about selling online? And he said, nothing, but you're going to help me. And I said, okay. And I didn't know anything about selling online. E-commerce was in its infancy. There wasn't, you know, the easy Shopify stores that you can just hop on, big commerce, those kind of things that can set you up in a minute. I mean, we had to really like archaically kind of build our site, you know, build the shopping cart separate from the website, have it on there. You know, it was just, you reach out to a payment processor and, and get, so it just, it was really, really quite, you know, difficult compared to today. Um, but yeah, even even like five or six years ago, I mean, yeah, the, the, the game has changed. You know, if you had a website, you know, that was like WordPress, well, then you needed yeah. to figure out like there were only a few, you know, the like cart. there was, yeah, like yeah, WooCommerce and then payments. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, those the big, you know, the big kind of Shopify, WooCommerce, those things were they were, you know, just getting started, uh, you know, around that time. I wasn't aware of them. You know, our developer, the guys that I worked with, the graphic designer, and then a guy that he knew that programmed, um, we, they didn't know about them. So we just started it from scratch like that. Um, and it's been pretty amazing seeing. And then, you know, not even to mention that things like Facebook advertising were, was not a thing. Google ads. I don't even think was a thing. I mean, it was like, there wasn't an easy way to, to get out there to people. So, you know, we, we started the website, but then the marketing was, you know, something that, that was really difficult at, at first as well. Um, and, and kind of started locally, you know, when, when that, when that happened. So, okay. So, so back up for a second. So you have this idea, he finds his product. How did you fund the opening order? I, I should say, what was the size of your opening buckle so, and and belt order like what well, because i i'm fascinated by a how how inexpensively certain companies can actually start their their yeah. business like i literally started pete and pedro with three thousand bucks that wow. was enough for my opening inventory of five products to get wow. my website to get my stamps.com little like printer like dymo printer and that's, everything so that's 3, amazing bucks. for you to do it for that is is incredible um yeah i mean i, I think initially my father had uh, an initial investment of fifty thousand that um that he took to get inventory and, and i don't we didn't spend all that to begin with but that was kind of the initial investment that um he had reached out to a few really good friends and and showed them the idea they came on as just you know an initial agreement to you know borrow that and then pay it back they you know didn't have any kind of equity but um you know pay it back with a little interest and so started out with that and we started with three straps and two buckles and so you know if, if <laughs> today we have literally you know thousands of possible combinations with you know 20 plus buckles in each width and, and, you know, 40 something straps. It's, it's kind of crazy compared to the three and two that we started with, but, um, you know, just a, a very small, uh, initial order. We went through a global trade broker. Um, and if anybody, you know, is starting a business that sometimes is, is, is a way to, to start because those guys, that's their job. What's a, what, what, what is that? What's yeah, it? So, I've never even heard of a yeah, global so trade a, broker, a, a, you know, and this was before Alibaba. This is before you could just go on the internet and find factories that are now reaching out to companies that that make things. But um, a global trade broker is somebody here in the U.S. You know, typically if you're in the U.S., there's people in the U.S. that have connections with factories that they work with for a variety of products. So if you need, you know, this kind of product, they have these factories. If you need this product, they have these that they work with. They have relationships with, and and you can trust that. And so that was the biggest thing. You know, back then we didn't know. You know the like I said, Alibaba, these kind of resources weren't as evident um, or, or easy to use. And so reached out to a global trade worker. The problem is, is they take a percentage, you know, so any kind of order that you place, they'll take, you know, 5% of the total or, you know, you tack on another 5% of your total order mm -hmm. like that. So, um, you know, originally started with that, reached out to them, um, reached out to a, an engineer uh, locally in, in Raleigh where, where I was living at the time and, and wanted to kind of change some things, redesign a little bit of the things that I didn't like, the latch. Um, it was really hard to get to. You couldn't really like, um, you know, take the buckle off. I mean, the strap off very easy. So reached out to an engineer for that. Um, and yeah, then, uh, you know, the global trade broker and, and put in an initial order and um, just kind of started small and, and built trust with that manufacturer. And we're actually still with um, the same. Uh, no, and I take that back. That, that came a couple years later, but um, still with the same manufacturer that we've been with for, you know, at least eight years now. Um, so built an incredible relationship with that. But um, wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so, so you, you launch the business. How long does it take you to sell through, say, that, that opening inventory? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was, it was years, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, it was, like I said, the, the marketing end of it was so different. I mean, we had to start locally. Like we, um, you know, we reached out to local magazines and local stuff, you know, um, it, with that. The, the biggest thing that I got and kind of the biggest break, my first break, um, yeah. was I, uh, I was working with who used to be my old boss. I was in marketing with a real estate company, had gotten laid off from there. Um, and, and so reached out back to my old boss who was uh, head of marketing there. She had since then had left and I brought her on to kind of help us get it off the ground. Well, she got me into a radio show that I could be part of the live audience, right? And so she was like, look, I'm gonna get you in there. I can't promise you'll get on the air, but I can get you in as part of the live audience. There were 12 of us in the live audience. So I brought three belts and I was like, I was like, all right, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to try to get on air. And so the first thing they were like, hey, does anybody want to play a game? And I was like, yes, I was like right here. And they were like, uh, OK, you and, and you. And so I was like, OK, here it is, you know, and then the microphones in front of me. I'm like, how am I going to how am I going to do this? You know, so during a commercial break. I was like, um, hey, I was like, I, I actually, I brought you guys something. Uh, this is the company my father and I started, Anson Belt and Buckle. It's a micro adjustable holeless belt instead of five holes. You have 30 plus options apart, you know, and they were just like, wow, this is great. I've been looking for something like this. This is amazing. So yeah. they got so wrapped up that they came back from commercial and they were like, oh, what? Okay, we're, we're back on here. And, and so wait, we were just talking with uh, David here. David, tell us a little bit more about uh, about this company. You, uh, you and I was like, here we go. You know, so I got to shout it out and got to say, you know, give the website, AnsonBelt.com, A-N-S-O-N belt.com and you know really really try to drive it in and uh and so that was 15 20 seconds but you know didn't have to pay for it got on there and uh and it was amazing so that was kind of the first time that we got you know i mean we were doing one two orders a week you know before oh that. wow, I mean, wow, yeah, wow. I mean, it was, because nobody had heard about us you know i mean if you know when you start like that and there's not social media there's not avenues to advertise like that it's really hard to to get the word out so friends and family things like that you know um, they were buying, but no one else had heard about us. So that was the first time we started to have, you know, 10, 12, 20 orders come in in a day. And it was just like, holy cow, this is amazing. Yeah. You know? So that was the first time. But, uh, you know, to answer your question, I mean, it took it took at least probably, you know, three years to go through the inventory that, that we had. And my dad had it all in his little condo and was shipping it out, you know, from there. And, and I was still working full time and, and just, you know, doing this at night and, and weekends and, and just, you know, in, in between my free time, just trying, you know, doing the customer service from my phone and, and you know, when I could. So, so that, that brings up something interesting that I'd like to talk about for a second. So you just mentioned that you were working full time while you were doing this, this business. I think a lot of people, when they Absolutely. think about starting a business, they're like, oh, I just want to go full in. I want to, you know, I would have jumped. Yeah. Well, that's not exactly the smartest, no. smartest decision. You got it. You got to, you got to sort of walk before you run. How Absolutely. long were you working this business before you ended up going full time? So it was about um, about five years or so. I, uh, you know, I five was years. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was working, you know, full time. Um, you know, we started in, in 2009. I really started working on it about 2008. And, you know, launched the website um, in 2010, but you know, had been working on it full time or you know, working on it in 2009. And I actually got laid off again, um, which is, you know, I'm just like, okay, this is it. You know, got it's not laid them. Off. It's you, David. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> The That's what I'm starting to think. And, the you know, universe was trying to tell you something. Okay, go I on. know. Well, they, it was trying to tell me, hey, you don't need to work for anybody. You can be your own boss. And so, you know, my wife kept saying, I, I wanted to quit so bad. She was like, you can't quit and you can't get fired. And so when I got laid off, I was like, okay, this is it. This is my opportunity. You know, and she was like, we'll give you a, you know, I'll give you a few months, you know, if you can really make this work and, and sales really pick up enough that I can get a salary, you know, from Anson and, and make it, you know, a full-time position, then, you know, that that's great. But if not, then I'm going to have to start looking for another job. And, you know, after the first couple of months, I was like, there's no way I'm going back to working for anybody again. I don't want to ever be laid off again. I don't want anybody else dictating my future. You know, I want that to be in my own hands. And so, so that brings, so that sounds like sort of the, the next, the segue to my next question. What is the, what is the most rewarding part of, of being an entrepreneur at this stage of the game? Yeah, I mean, you know, being your own boss and, and being able to, to dictate your own future. So as hard as I work, that's what I'm going to get out of it, you know, and, and, and I'm going to get out of it, not me working super hard for my boss to get kudos on, on my work, you know, but the most rewarding thing is that, you know, my, my destiny is in, in my own control. And, you know, if I work hard and, and really, you know, do well, then I'm going to benefit 
from that, you know, and so that's my motivation to, you know, to keep providing for my family, you know, with my business that I have control of, as well as building something that I'm really proud of, you know, so building a brand from the ground up, from scratch, creating it, everything that goes into it has been, you know, ideas that I've had and, and, and have brought it all together. So, you know, that that's super rewarding to have something that you've built and be like, you know, this is what I made. Um, and so that's that's really important as well. So, you know, something else that's really important and and your website really speaks to it. When you go on your website, one of the things that is very, very apparent is the amount of customer reviews. Yeah. You literally yes. have like twenty seven over twenty seven thousand. Yes reviews yes. of your product. Yes. And I think in the in the world of um, you know, e-commerce and the world that we live right now, you know, your your business lives and dies by the review, right? Oh, yeah. It really does. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this is Absolutely. you know, 5 years ago you could tell a customer to, you know, kind of like f off if you didn't, you know, <laughs> if, if you didn't like what they say. You can't do that anymore. No. No. Because, it's because social media, you cannot. So Social yeah. media has changed. Now you've got yeah. to really be a good steward of of not only your customer but but your business and mm -hmm. and really sort of facilitate that that good customer experience. So yeah. what would you say is is the most common sort of feedback you get from customers regarding your belt. And how do you go about actually getting so many people to actually leave a review? Cause, cause the one thing, every single person that I've ever given a belt to or talked to somebody, you know, your product is the one that I always get the comments, you know, in the video, Oh, I bought an Anson belt. It is the best belt. You know, yeah. all the people at the men influential conference, like there is, there is con like every, every person I know in terms of my, my, my influence or friends and, and really everybody is rocking yeah. your belts. How do Thanks. you facilitate that type of sort of ravenous sort of loyalty? And the, and, and how do you, how do you recommend other people sort of go about doing that? Yeah. So, I mean, I think that it all kind of comes down to it being a great product. You know, I mean, that's kind of one of the biggest things is that it's a great product that solves a problem that a lot of guys have had. And so, you know, when you do that with a great product, you know, they're going to want to talk about it and they're going to want to tell people. Um, and so, you know, not only coupled with with a great product and, and really good quality, um, but as well as customer service. Customer service is our absolute number one priority. So I still personally am always in our, our, you know, customer service ticket queue. I'm constantly, you know, looking over tickets that are coming in, responding to a lot of them myself. I still answer the phone myself. Um, I'm still very, very active in our customer service. So if I call Anson Belt, I'm going to get you on yeah. the phone. I mean, get out of here. Call right now. The, call the number on the website <laughs> and it'll come to this phone. And, you know, my other, my other employee, John here, um, you know, he, he answers the phone every now and then, but I'd say 90% of the time I answer the phone and, and I that, love to talk with our customers and, yeah. and I'll let them know. I'll slip that in, you know, you know, thank you so much again. My name is David. I'm the owner. So if you ever have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And they're like, holy cow, are you, wait, you're, no, you're that's, the owner? That's, and that's, that's crazy. You don't I hear mean, that a lot, but I guarantee you every single one of those people that I've spoken with and have told that and talked to and then helped, they now, they're, you know, they may have been a fan before, but they're a raving fan now. And so you know, it gets more advocates out there. It makes them feel, you know, closer to the brand and, and you know, gets to know the person that that's behind the brand. And to me, as an e-commerce, you know, uh, entrepreneur, you and you know, like you don't get to see your customers all the time, you know, or very rarely, you know, so things like Menfluential were really special to me because I was able to see my customers. You know, I would be talking about the belts and the guy's like, oh, yep, I've got one on. And I'm like, holy cow, thank you so much. I get to shake their hand. In, yep. a, you know, in an online world, that's very rare that you get to talk with your customers. So, um, you know, I enjoy talking with the customers. I enjoy helping them. And then at the end of the day, I can make anything happen. So, you know, I, I'm the top of the food chain as far as like, you need a new belt, I got you, you know? So I like to be able to make those calls and, and really, you know, take care how, of our customers. So, How many employees do you have? So you, you probably, I guess, uh, you probably want, I mean, off the top of your head, what would you say? <laughs> I don't know. You know uh, that we're... I know, I know it's probably not as much or as many as most people think. I would say probably in terms of employees, we're not going to account, like talk about like, like, in, like I'd, I'd assume you outsource like accounting and things of the yeah, bookkeeping and so, stuff like that. So yeah, I'd say so, employees like, and, and so are you shipping for, or it, it's a, no, no, center? And that's another good question, but no, we're not, okay. I'm not doing any of this. So we have, you know, a okay. fulfillment center that does all of our shipping. Okay. So, so I'm going to go, I'm going to go with three employees. Yeah. So you, and you knew it was going to be low and that's very, very close. We have two full-time employees besides my father and myself. And okay. so those are my two, two of my childhood best friends grew up with both of them, uh, brought <laughs> so them great. on. 
Yeah, so, yeah. so two full-time employees and then a part-time uh, a lady that actually works at our fulfillment center and, and also does customer service nights and weekends. So she is, is on the, the customer service ticket queue nights and weekends all the way up until about 11 o'clock Eastern time. She's taking care of tickets um, and then on the weekends. So we're constantly getting back to people just as fast as we can. Um, and yeah, so... Uh, outside, I have a ton of strategic partners. So and, hold, and I, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to back this up because there are a okay. lot of people that I know, like Eric Van Holtz, right? Yeah. You know, Eric, we, you know, oh, yeah. Be yeah. beard brand, you know, great yeah. guy's been on the podcast, good friend of mine. Yeah. You know, he has, I mean, his business has a lot of employees. Like he yeah. is, you know, he hires a lot of people. You they know? have like the barbershop and stuff too. And they, like, yeah, you know. but they, they have a lot of employees. You yeah. know, T. Shanley also has, you know, quite a few employees, lots of different you know, I'm not saying it, it's more than we need. I mean, everybody serves a role, but but I'm sort of like for Pete and Pedro, you know, I have six employees, you know, yeah. you know, you, Pete, and, you know, and, and we do all of our, our fulfillment at our at our yeah. facility. And so we are doing that. Speaking but of, um, we've got a bottle of Rebel right here. There it is, baby. I could. Yeah. I thought Coming I up on a, good. A free about Friday giveaways. <laughs> so 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 talk a little bit about that, because that's something that is so amazing. I think a lot of people you know, your business does, does well. It does, you know, you know, six, seven, seven figures. Are you almost yeah, eight? I mean, we, yeah. That, we, you know, we made the, the Inc 5,000 fastest growing companies three years in a row. I mean, you know, all in all we've done in the last 10 years, you know, 20 plus million dollars worth of belt sales. Yeah. But to do that, I mean, when you think about that with the amount of employees that you have, I think that's something that, that I don't, I don't think a lot of people understand how that, that is possible. And yeah. and why it's important to do that. So yep. why do you keep it so small? Yeah. So you know, for one, I mean, it, it keeps overhead low. Um, you know, I mean, if we had a space that we had to yeah, have, hold on, did you hear that, everyone? You yeah, keep, keep overhead as it, low yeah, as so, possible. Go yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, it, it keeps overhead low. Um, and also, I feel like I can find people and and have resources of of people that I rely on as kind of an extension of my team that are much better experts than what I could find, you know, locally or that I could hire a freelancer to do this or that. I mean, these guys that I have are specialists in their field, you know, whether it's our, you know, website development and e-commerce optimization stuff or whether it's our, our digital ad strategies and, and things like that. So, I mean, you know, they're experts. I could, you know, it would be really hard for me in, in Eastern North Carolina to find, you know, the people to come into an office here, you know, with those kind of, um, you know, kind of capabilities. So, you know, I'm able to, to find people that specialize in what I need um, and, and have them do and, and me pay for them to do just what I need them to do. So, you know, if, if it's if, if a month gets slow and, you know, and you have all this overhead, all these employees and you're like, um, I guess go sweep the back, you know, dock, you know, I mean, I, I, you try to find things for them to do. Yep. Um, whereas for us, you know, we have a, a very small team that, you know, everybody has their job that, that they stay busy with. Um, you know, and it, it's not to say that it hasn't gotten, um, you know, during Christmas and, and Father's Day times like that, you know, it gets a little strenuous. Um, but, you know, we've, we've brought on things like our live chat um, that is, you know, we outsource that to a third party. And, and, you know, so they're very helpful at answering quick questions, you know, anything in depth they send to our customer service team, but um, things like that, you know, so lots of strategic partners and I could not do it without them, but um, it's been good to, to keep that overhead low, to keep the team small. And when you come across things like a, a global pandemic, where all of a sudden, you know, I mean, like th this time or no, not this time, but March of last year, I mean, it came to a, almost a grinding halt. I mean, it was like how, what percentage things, was your business down last March versus the, I mean, the March on, on March, what was it? The 16th, I think it was um, when the announcement was made that, you know, we're, we're going to lockdowns and stuff like that. Um, I mean, it fell, you know, 80% in a day. I mean, it was just, it just dropped off the map. Um, and I think a lot of people kind of got scared, like, whoa, you know, am I going to need to start, you know, watching, am I going to have a job? You know, do I, they started watching what they were spending. They weren't having to go to work. They weren't going to work. People aren't going into offices. They're not going to weddings. They're not going to expos and events. They're not having to look good and, and wear a belt. They're in, they're at home in their sweatpants, you know? So yeah. um, it, it really definitely took a, a, you know, a hit to our business during that time. And still, I mean, we're, you know, we usually experience 30 to 40% growth year over year, just, which is incredible. I mean, that growth has been phenomenal over the years, but last year that, that did not happen. You know, we were down uh, about 20%, um, you know, so yeah. it, it definitely, it, but it you're in, you're in you're, the, the apparel industry was hit harder than yeah. like, the grooming industry actually yeah. saw, you know, and yeah. a, had their best years ever because that's, people were home. Amazing. And, 
And, yeah, and but some, some apparel, like at the leisure type stuff, sweatpants and sweatshirts and then workout gear, that stuff, you know, shot up. I have friends that, that sell, you know, workout stuff and, and their business was booming, you know, so it's yeah. it really kind of dependent. But for us, you know, that, and I imagine other things like, um, you know, custom shirts and, and, you know, custom, you know, really, really nice shoes, those kind of yeah, things. Yeah. I'm sure that they took a hit as well. So um, people just aren't having to go in public as much. So that's starting to turn. And, and this year is definitely looking better and, and, and looking up. So um, it's getting better. And, and as more people start to get back to work and those kind of things, you know, it'll start to pick up. But um, it's something, you know, when that happened, I was glad that I didn't have a team of 20 people that all sure. of a sudden I'm having to lay off people. That's the worst. I don't want to have to lay anybody off. You know, I don't no, want to have absolutely. to fire anybody. So, um, so talk so a little bit about so talk a little bit about, you know, we talked a little bit about the the upside of entrepreneurship. Talk a little bit about the downside. What is what is some of the yeah. downsides to? I mean, obviously, you just you just mentioned one when when uh, when when sales are down and everything is down. You know, you yeah. are the you know the buck stops here kind of exactly. kind of thing. But uh, what is the what is the downside to being an entrepreneur? You know, so one of the things that um that really was hard in the, in the first years of really getting this going, and I was putting a lot of time into it after hours and and after work, is that you know my wife was kind of getting a little tired of me always being on my phone, you know, always answering emails, constantly doing, I was doing all the customer service myself. But she doesn't mind that little bell that goes off every yeah, time. Yeah, no, that was, she's that, okay we, with that. We do the order dance. So we say when that goes off, I even taught my son and I do the order dance, do the order <laughs> dance, you know. Um, so that was nice. But, you know, it really was getting a little bit, um, you know, she's just, she was getting a little tired of just kind of the amount of time that I had to put into it. Um, and I was just like, look, just bear with me. Let me just get this going. One day, one day I'll be able to hire people to do a lot of this stuff for me. And thankfully, in the last you know three or four years that I've been able to hire you know my my buddy John and, and Kenny to come on and do customer service, um, especially nights and weekends customer service, I've been able to step away from that end of it, and and that's been a huge help. But that's one of the toughest things that you know the time that it takes away from your family, from your wife, um, you know, from people that you love. You you're just putting all of the extra hours that you have into trying to build a business. So. That's that's the downside, but hopefully you can get it to a point where you can eventually bring people on to take care of some of those responsibilities and and take some, you know get some of that time back. So, what's the biggest mistake you've made over the course of the past say nine years since you've had the business? Ten years? Um, you know, I I wonder sometimes, and I you know, but looking back on it, I don't think that's a mistake. But I, I wondered at times, you know, should I be bringing on more people? Should I be kind of, you know, bringing more of a team on in, internally and doing um, some of this shipping ourselves and, and stuff like that. But um, but that's panned out a, a okay. But um, it, I mean, as far as, you know, I've made little mistakes with, with you know, linking up with, um, you know, stuff that, that seemed like it would be really good, a, a really good idea for a, you know, a promo video of like, you know, like a, a, a spot, you know, this is like a late night, uh, you know, they fit you in the 10, 15 seconds talking about, you know, this and On that. The news, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I've gotten those you know, emails too. <laughs> $10,000 to go down and produce this commercial that's going to be introduced by, you know, so-and-so, so-and-so. And then, you know, I did that once. And I mean, you want to talk about a flop. Like we didn't see a single extra visitor, a single nothing. And I, you know, I think we shelled out $10,000 just to like, you know, to have a video that we never used anywhere. Mike, Mike um, Schwartz, uh, he, uh, he used to have the, the company Rib Did you know that he shut the business down? No, no, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, wow. he shot it. He got a divorce too. <laughs> wow, no, I did not know yeah, that. Gosh. Yeah, Mike, Mike, Mike Schwartz. It's a friend of ours. Um, probably shouldn't be talking about this in a public forum, but uh, but yeah, he reached out and he's like, "Hey, I'm shutting the business down, yeah. and uh, I'm getting divorced, and I'm moving." And I'm like, "Whoa, you know." And and these are the, for those of you watching or listening. Um, Mike is a, a good friend of all of ours. He has been there for the uh, the Men Fluential Conference. You know, pretty much as long as. He yeah, actually was there one year longer than you. He was. He, he, had, he was. He was yeah. out there in Anaheim, California, the first yeah. year. Um, and so we, the way that you and I have met is actually through Antonio Centeno. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Antonio is the the greatest networker I've ever seen. He's um, I, I owe so much to Antonio for you know for life. And I'll so tell. tell the story did, so yeah, tell the Antonio that's a story. Funny story. Like. Okay. It, it's kind of wild. Antonio had seen something that uh, a guy, um, this uh, George Zeroff. So are you familiar? You know, George, he was at Mifluential. Um, he has, you know, his, For, his cologne. cologne. Yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. And uh, he's, he's had a line. He's an incredible guy. And I had reached out to him with a question through like a Yahoo Answers 
type something. And it was when I was first getting going, I was like, Hey, what do you think about this belt? You know, he was doing like fashion answers. And he said he just randomly would, you know, signed on to answer questions like that. Anyway, he got back and was like, I love the idea. I love the concept. I sent him a belt. And then he tweeted out at some point, you know, love this belt from Anson belt, blah, blah, blah. And like, you know, and then Antonio saw that and Antonio reached out. He was just getting his YouTube channel going. This was like 2012, 2013. And uh, he was just getting it going. And actually, no, maybe it was 2010, even. No, yeah. No, so, he had it. He had it going. He, it, he's had it going a long time. Yeah. I think maybe 2000. But it was like he says that it was the first video that he did a review on. And if you go back and search, like you know, is Anson it still there? Belt, yeah, I mean, it's one of the first. If you search Anson Belt reviews, like at least it was. Things may have buried it at this point, but um, but yeah, it was one of the first videos. And it's so funny because I mean, you know, as you've looked back at your first videos. You know he's gotten much better over time so have you you know it's just when you first start like that you know you you're not as polished as you are today but it's funny watching that um and it sent you know uh, we sent him a box set he did a review and we saw traffic from that just for years and years and and i i kept a relationship just uh you know he would reach out i would reach out you know just kind of, you know weren't working with him on anything formally um and then he reached out and said hey we're you know i've partnered up with with aaron marino uh and Funny story, we had, and I don't even know if you remember this, and I've mentioned this before, but I don't think you remember that we had a conversation about two years, three years before Minfluential. We had a phone call and we talked for 30, 30 minutes or so. You don't remember that, do you? No. Yes. Yes. Are you lying? So, no, I'm dead serious. We had, I had around after, so after Antonio had, you know, we had seen that video, he did that video. It was a, you know, it sent us traffic and stuff. I started thinking, okay, so are there other guys out there that, that are doing this YouTube thing, this YouTube style thing? And I came across you. And so I reached out to you and you got back to me and I, I wanted to look at the emails. I about, I should have done that before I got on. But so you reached back out to me. We had a conversation. We were talking about, you know, you promoting the belts and this and that. But at that time, you were really a lot more interested in like, partnering up with a brand to like kind of almost have equity in the brand which is ironic because that's kind of like what you've done with you know with the brands that you own now you know and so yeah. um yeah i think you were seeing that vision you know years before that you were like you know what if i do this i, I think that i want to have some stake in it you know and so that wasn't really the the path that we were trying to go yeah. and, and the conversation really no it didn't go any further and, and like it must not have been very memorable I... to you <laughs> you don't remember <laughs> But, it's all the it's all the drugs. Don't, don't yeah, the drugs yeah. Way, David. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, so you know, when Antonio reached back out and was like, "Hey, I'm doing a conference with uh, you know my good friend Aaron Marino, and and I think you guys you know would be a great fit for the audience, and would you like to sponsor it?" And I said, "Absolutely." So you know, it, we went the first year. I, I really didn't know what to expect. Um, you know, we went there, my father and I, and my wife. And by the way, Kristen says hello. She said to tell hello, Kristen. Tell Aaron, yes. Hello. Yeah. So um, you know, so. Loved, you know, meeting everybody. And, and what's funny is like at the beginning of the conference, um, you know, I had met, you know, met Brian first off, like, you know, the first thing they were like, hey, um, you know, actually you were like, hey, Brian, help David uh, set up his his booth, you know, and so Brian, um, you know, Brian, you're, you know, with, with Minfluential helped us um, set up the booth, kind of got to know him, showed him the belt. He loved it, showed everybody else the belt. So the whole weekend, everybody was getting the belts. We were actually selling them that year and we were just selling them left and right. I mean, you know, we had a really good deal going on. Everybody was wearing, we were sizing them up for right there. So by the end of the conference, everybody's wearing one. Um, your, your dad, there, was are, there are only like 30 people that was wearing one. Like <laughs> everyone in your family had one. And so finally, by the end of the conference, you were like, all right, I, I've got to check out these belts. So you were like, show me what you got, you know? And you, so you gave me like, you know, this, I had to do my, my elevator pitch to you, you know? And I, so I, I showed them to you and you're like, okay. You're like, I, you know, actually, I, I think this can work. And you were like, so let me, let me get one. So I gave you one. Um, and, and then the, the rest is history. But, you know, I think you, you, you obviously, you fell in love with it and, and you saw Absolutely. that everybody else fell in love with it and that, you know, okay, this is something that, that people actually like. So I felt, you know, you, at least I, I'm guessing. Let me, let me explain one of the reasons why, like, like I've got this one belt story that I, that I really was, it was, it was horrible. And, and I'm sure a lot of other people will, will maybe resonate with the story. So I, you know, love shoes. Right. And I remember when I was first really getting into this, like YouTube thing and the style thing, I went to this one store and I found this gray pair of leather Kenneth Cole shoes. Mm -hmm. And I just thought these things were the coolest shoes ever. <laughs> and I get it. And this was, I mean, probably, I mean, it had to have been like 12 years ago. I mean, it was a long time ago. Yeah. 
And I got these shoes and I'm like, awesome. But I was the dude that always wanted to match his belt with his shoes. And so I'm like, okay, I got to find a gray belt. Well, guess what? There were no gray belts anywhere. I went to Express. I went to Macy's. I went, I went everywhere with these shoes yeah. trying to find a belt. I yeah. ended up finding this really ugly gray fabric belt with holes, like literally the whole belt. Yeah. And that's the belt that I wore with these shoes oh. because there was, there was no other option. Yeah. And so, you know, so I, I, I hated this belt. And then, you know, anyway, so when I sort of found you guys and started looking at what was happening and the fact that you had all of these fabric belts, and that's the thing, I have always been a huge fan of, of those belts, like with the metal buckle with like the slide, yeah. it's a, it's a, like yeah. a camp, like you know what I'm talking about? Retention style kind of. Yeah, like I, I love, yeah. I love them. And, um, and so when I got, fit. you were able to fit it, you know, you didn't have to rely on holes, you know, same kind of idea. Exactly. But, yeah. Exactly. But they, <laughs> but the problem with them is that they weren't very refined, right? They're, yeah. they're, they're very casual. Yeah. And so when I found you guys, you know, I have fallen in love. I love the leathers, right? And that's the thing that you guys have that, that like no other company does. If mm -hmm. you've got a color shoe, you can match it. Like you have the tans, you've got the, you know, camels, you've got the browns, you've got the chestnuts, you've got the oxblood, you've got all of the leathers, the yep. different shades of brown, you know, matching black is easy. All you got to worry about is the texture and yep. the, you know, the finishing Gene, style. Yeah, yep. yeah, exactly. Brown is a different story. Oh, there man. are like 30 sure. different shades of brown. And so yep. you guys literally have a shade of brown for any pair of shoe, but then yep. you also have blue belts. You've got like, you've got like some crazy ass belts colors. Purple belts and, you know, white belts and yeah. And gray. Yeah. And you've got gray. And, gray. Yeah, we do. and I don't have, I don't have those shoes. Yeah. yeah, I don't have those shoes anymore, <laughs> but you guys have gray belts. And then- Great like leather, said, great canvas, yeah. Yep. And so. the thing that I love so much is that this this one that I'm rocking today is, is my go-to. It's my black fabric belt. I put a gold buckle on it for my watch. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, they're so incredibly versatile. And the thing that I love so much is that, you know, with, with a lot of guys rocking these like minimal white sneakers, it's mm -hmm. like, Oh, what are you going to wear a white belt? No, nobody, you no. shouldn't wear a white belt. Like don't wear a no, white belt. No, no, and, too, and too then, matchy matchy sometimes, you know, you, you can get there. Yeah, exactly. And so you guys have this like blue and white striped belt that yes. looks and, and all your, your blue and red stripe, you've got all these incredibly fun, playful fabrics that just really take outfits, casual outfits to that next level, yep. because it's just a way to add another, like it's all, it's an accessory, you know, it, I think yep. oftentimes like for years, belts have been kind of like an overlooked like necessity, as yep. opposed to something that you actually embrace and want to show off. Absolutely. And that's the thing that you guys have, have just done incredibly well. You've made the belt, not only a better belt, it's a sexy accessory now that you can now like coordinate and complement yeah. like any outfit. Absolutely. It really anchors the outfit. You know, if you look at somebody's outfit where you can actually see the belt and if they weren't wearing one versus them wearing one, I mean, it's night and day. They, I mean, every time you would say that looks better. I mean, it, it absolutely does. And, and I love what you, you, you said about the white, um, you know, the navy with white stripe, because, you know, you don't want to wear a white belt that's just too matchy matchy. But that white little thin white line just gives just enough that it ties together the shoes but then has the blue that, that really complements it. So, um, so yeah. while I go grab that belt, just to show, hold on, while I go grab that belt, just to show people yeah. what we're talking about, I want you to tell everybody, what is your best piece of advice for an entrepreneur? You know, somebody wants to start a business. They've been thinking about it. What's the first step you would say? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, like I, you know, I kind of mentioned earlier to, you know, to reach out to people that you can get an idea if this is something that is going to solve a problem that people have. So, you know, that's a big key to having a, any kind of product that you offer is will it solve a problem that someone has? So, you know, kind of test the waters, see what people think, see what people feel, you know, talk to friends and family that are going to give you an honest answer, um, you know, but, but also just kind of just do it. You know, I mean, that's the biggest thing. People have ideas. And, and you know, I'm, I say this as I have, you know, ideas myself that I want to do, and, you know, and, but, and it's always easier said than done. But, you know, if, if you don't do it, if you don't start, you don't start kind of just kind of beating the bushes and, and kind of feeling around doing little things to see how, you know, if this would work and, and reaching out to people, reaching out to your contacts, you know, people that you know, that may be in, you know, in a similar industry, but, you know, a parallel kind of um, business that, you know, hey, if I wanted to do this, where would I start, you know, and they can kind of guide you in that direction. Um, yeah, I mean, right now, there's so many resources 
online for you know whether it's uh, reaching out to manufacturers or you know researching you know e-commerce websites and things like that you know but do your research and just kind of start to see what it would take to actually bring to fruition you know your idea and, and what you're gonna you know try to bring to market so um you know do your research and, and then just just do it i love that all right so let me show everybody right white snakes white navy belt with a white a clean white polo white t-shirt Ooh, yeah. jeans yeah. my god that's my go-to in the summer yeah. oh yeah all right Great summer so, look so david all right where can everybody find you so ansonbelt.com that's going to be the website you can follow us on instagram at ansonbelt on instagram uh, at ansonbelt on facebook um at ansonbelt on twitter so a n s where, where does the name anson come from so my father grew up in anson county north carolina so there's a, a county uh, where Wadesboro is, that's where he grew up. And so Anson County, and, and that's kind of even where the, the initial investors that his friends, um, they were all kind of buddies from, from back home. And so, um, you know, so that was one thing, you know, we really debated a lot of these, uh, a lot of our competitors and stuff, and guys listen to this, you know, you probably have heard of other people doing this. And, and you know, I've seen them all come up from the beginning, come up, you know, since we started. Um, and a lot of them kind of try to use names that, you know, insinuate what the, the belt is or does, you know? And so that was a really tough thing. You know, do we try to be like the something belt that like, you know, kind of insinuates what it the does track belt or something like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Stuff like that. But I didn't want that. I wanted to build a brand, you know? So like, I've always been, you know, just, uh, I've always loved brands and, and logos and, and, and the way that a brand can, can build a, um, just kind of a, a feeling that you have, when you wear it or see it and, and that people just gravitate towards it and that, you know, when they love it, they absolutely love it. So I wanted to build a brand and I didn't feel like those kind of names did that. So when my dad suggested Anson, I was like, you know what, that could work and, and I could get behind that. So, um, so yeah, Anson belt and buckle. And, um, you know, that's kind of funny. A lot of people also probably wouldn't put in the belt and buckle, but I really think that it, it kind of gives you a good idea that, Hey, this is a belt and a buckle and that, you know, they can act separately. So, you know, mixing and matching is a big thing with our belts. They're interchangeable. Our box set being our best value, you know, you get three straps. Let, and under, let me, and let me, let me, let me, let me take care of that. All right. The yeah, best deal, yeah. gentlemen, go to answerbeltbuckle.com or it's just answerbelt.com. And you get there uh, by answerbelt and buckle too. But yeah. You, yeah, anyway, the best deal going on is the box set where you get to build it. You can pick three straps, two buckles or three buckles, two straps. You pick, mix and match. You can go yeah. fabric, you can go leather, you can go whatever you want, Absolutely. but it's under $100. Absolutely. And if you guys have shopped for a belt like recently in a store, yeah. you know that you can't get one belt for yeah. $100, yet alone a combination of like 12. Right. Yeah. So, you know, wanted to be able to let them know that they can mix and match and stuff. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of where the name came from. And, and you know, I, I live and breathe it now. So I, I love it. David, thank you so much for being a part of this. Hey, it was a lot of fun, me, man. man. And Congratulations Absolutely. to all the success. It was, it's been yeah, amazing to so watch much. you, you guys succeed. And, you know, I'm rooting for you guys. I love your product. Uh, there aren't you, any, you. any products that I believe in more that I've talked about other than my own awesome. that I really yeah. truly believe in. And I know that, you know, anybody out there listening or watching, if you have not tried an Anson buckle or <laughs> Anson belt, you are absolutely missing out. Once you do, yeah. you're going to be like, where have you been my whole life? Well, anyway, you, David, that thank you so cool. much for Thank you for being a part of this. And uh, guys, go check out Ants and Belt and grab yourself a super sexy belt. David, thanks, brother. Take care. Bye-bye.